Hi, my name is Eileen Perez and I'm an astrophysicist and this is how orbit works. So a circular orbit, and I will start from the most simple uh, approximation of an orbit, uh, you need the force, the gravitational force between the two objects to match the centrifugal force. So if you have a force pulling this way and a, fo and a force pulling that way, you can actually end up balancing the planet stable into an orbit. So let's talk about the two forces that need to be equal. So the centrifugal force needs to match a gravitational force. So if we look at it as the opposite of the centripetal force, it's mv squared over r, and then the force for gravity is the gravitational constant, m1, m2, divided by this distance square. So if you make this equal, these two are the two equations that you need to learn how to manipulate really well, and they generally come out to be almost every solution to any astronomy course program. So now let's talk about uh, the actual planetary orbits and the laws that they follow. So we have the Kepler laws uh, for our orbits, and these are really important. So the first one is that planets, in fact, move in elliptical orbits. So an elliptical orbit works with the sun is at, one, at the first focal point, and then we have a second focal point with nothing in it. And the orbits are sort of like this. And the way that we kind of categorize this or like how elliptical these orbits are is by the eccentricity of this orbit. And there's two important things here, is that this length is the semi-major axis, generally denoted by A, and this is a very important number to know when you look at a planet orbit. And then you have here the semi-minor axis, and this distance over here kind of tells us the eccentricity of the planet. Uh, if it's zero, it's circular. If it's between zero and one, it's elliptical. And there's other types of, force of orbits, but I won't go into the detail now. So the second law is equal area law, and this is also important. So when you look at an object, let's say that if the object went in time t, it went from this spot to this spot. So it covered this much area. Okay, so let's say that in the other side of the orbit, the furthest point, it goes from here to here, and it covers this much area. Now, if this time, the time to go from here to here is the same time to go from here to here, these areas are equal. So that means that A1 is equal to A2 if T2 is equal to T1. And that's the equal area law. Now, the third law is something that is very handy. And uh, we generally approximate it and kind of take out some constants. Just it's a, it's a relationship thing that you should keep in mind. And is that the orbital period square is proportional to the semi-major axis cubed. And those are the three Kepler laws of planetary motion. My name is Eileen Perez, and this is how orbits work. Mm -hmm.